Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hassett Sabbath Fellowship. We're virtual only. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. The phone number does work if you'd like to contact us. We do the philosophy of eschatology, what you need to know, your reality, what's going on, why are we born for such a place and time as this? And we try to solve Revelation a little bit at a time, like when does Revelation start? So we're working on that today. I'm arguing potentially based on biblical verses that there's a two minute, that uh, means two year warning. Is it biblical? Yes, but it is conjecture people. But let's look at the verses and see what you think. So two minute, two year, two whatever warning. Yes, there are some verses that are intriguing. It's rather prophetic. Um, you know, Tim LaHaye and John Wheeler have talked about it before, um, and Bill Vincent talked about it. God does warn us. He, based on Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28 and, and other passages, God does send warnings. Well, Jeremiah, all the way through Jeremiah. So there are warnings constantly. Repent or judgment is coming. So we're going to try to give you the Bible verses. We're trying to give you what I believe is accurate prophecy, and then try to cover some news. Oh, we'll have fun with that today. So this does not com compute biblically, okay? It doesn't say in the Bible, when you see a comet on Rosh Hashanah of 2023, that means that you have a two-year warning. It's just intriguing to see this. So yes, um, comet, and it's Nishimura, um, it's possible that it would be a naked eye spectacle for September 15th, which is Rosh Hashanah of 2023. So just watch for it. And last night, I'm recording on Sunday, um, we had Aurora Borealis. Now, I was lazy. I didn't get out of bed and go drive to my favorite spot to look at them because the problem is there's light pollution from the moon right now because we just had a big full moon just the other day. So uh, <laughs> I got lazy and I love Aurora. Okay. But anyway, it does that call attention to this particular Rosh Hashanah? I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So what season are we in? We are in September now of 2023. And you can see there is Erev Rosh Hashanah on the 15th through the 16th. I go with the sighted moon. So we'll see when it actually occurs. I think it's possible it will occur on the 15th going into the 16th. And that's kind of cool. Then what I'm citing is that the the horrible festival, because some people are celebrating uh, Tishri a month later this year, that's actually going to be Heshvan. And Heshvan 17 is the time that Noah's flood occurred. So... Um, so just keep that in mind that Heshvan is a dark month uh, all the time. The pagans love it because usually Halloween occurs during that time frame. And there it is leading in. Oh, I didn't even think about that. But that's Halloween the day before, oh, before Noah's flood. That's an interesting lead in. Okay, I didn't look at it that way, but I'm glad that I noticed it now. So once again, I'm seeing based on certain signs that have to coincide. So keep in mind, We'll read the verses in just a second. It's the next slide. But that you need to have a total eclipse of the moon in conjunction with a solar micronova of the sun. And so moon, sun, conjunction. Uh, these things have to occur together. I talked to Mark Biltz a couple of months ago. He agreed with me. Uh, when we read the verses in the next slide, you're going to see that it is not a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. They don't happen together. They just don't. Okay. So this, the next ones do on our calendar are two years away, March of 2025 and September of 2025. Very interesting, you know. And so here's in September 2025. Uh, actually, November, there is your Heshvan 17, which is Noah's flood date, but it's also typically seven years before uh, any Rosh Hashanah of a uh, you know, seven-year time frame. So just keep that in mind. That That is the typical time frame that I look at. I always, you know, once we get past Heshvan 17 and nothing occurs during the year and nothing's going to occur this year, many things will occur, but not going into the Great Tribulation, not this year. Okay, um, and then you can see that 2026 has one in March, uh, another uh, solar eclipse, and then, or lunar, lunar rather, lunar eclipse. And then 2028 is the next one after that. So we're years away. So settle down, get used to all the strangeness, and you're going to see strangeness in the video today. Get ready for it. But just keep in mind, 
as I mentioned, these things have to coincide, the sun and the moon. So then I watched as he broke the sixth seal. We're not up to that yet. We're just banging around in the birth pangs right now, getting ready to birth. So the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. Micronovas cause great earthquakes. The solar activity causes it. And so the micronova would unlock the crust and the man mantle would break free and the sun would be turning black then, okay? And that's not an eclipse. That's the final stage of that micronova. As Sackloth warned in morning, that would be an accurate portrayal as the sun goes from yellow to white to red to black as sackcloth, born in morning, and the full moon became blood red. It is a holo in the Greek, it's full moon, blood red, and the next one, as I mentioned, is Adar 14 of March 14th of 2025, so years away. The stars fell from the earth to heaven, and that's a micronova dust event. That's a production event. And so uh, as a fig, fig tree. So keep in mind that when this occurs, there will be earthquakes, a great earthquake. But the the micronova event will not cause huge uh, um, dust to penetrate our atmosphere. And so you won't be killed from anything like that. So you could watch it and be amazed as God displays what's going on going into that sixth seal time frame. So these are the bitter winter figs. So I'm guessing that it would be probably a winter time event. As shaken by a strong wind, the sky receded like a scroll being rolled up and every mountain and island was moved. That's your earthquake, okay? So be aware of the earthquakes, but you'll want to be underground as the micronova hits. So you'll have about 18 hours to run underground. And, and the reason for that is when the micronova hits, it's gonna short out every circuit on the planet. Okay, we're going to be in the Stone Age. So just keep that in mind. That seems to be what's going to be occurring. So that's Revelation 6, 12 through basically 17. So now let's get into the prophetic part of this video, which is the two-year warning, the two-minute warning. So these verses aren't that critical. This is Ishbosheth, Saul's son, 40 years old when he became king over Israel, and he was king for two years. Okay, whatever. Now it came about after a full two years. Okay, interesting. Absalom uh, was sitting there trying to figure out how to take David's thrown away from him. Interesting. Two years. Okay. All right. Uh, Second Chronicles 21. And keep in mind, Chronicles is n both are known as the historical books. I, I prefer Samuel and Kings because it's more prophetic and fun. It's poetic, you know. So then it came about in the course of time at the end of two years that the bowels came out because of his sickness and he died in great pain and the people made no fire for him like the fire for his fathers. Interesting, and I, I should have noted who it was, but it's one of the bad kings. So here's Second uh, Chronicles 33, 21. Ammon was 20 years, two years old when he became king and he reigned two years. Okay, so these verses prove nothing other than two years is cited consistently through the Bible. Here's more from Second Samuel. Um, and Absalom lived two full years and did not see the king's face. Okay, fine. And then 1 Kings 15, 25, he reigned in Israel two years, Jeroboam. Okay, Nadab, uh, son of Jeroboam. So um, then 1 Kings 16, 8, reigned two years. Okay, as Isaiah, uh, Ahaz Ahaziah, uh, two years over Israel, reigned. Okay, another one reigned two years, 2 Kings 15, 23. And then 2 Kings 22, 19, and on again. So it's repetitive because it's in Chronicles and Kings. But I just want you to see the verses. These are pretty much all of the verses that cite, other than New Testament, which really isn't as specific, that these things are big. Now we're going to cite what I like, these verses. So these are Genesis eleven ten. There are... These are the records of the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and became the father of Archbishad two years after the flood. Interesting. And then these are the best two verses. Now, Genesis 41.1. Now it happened at the end of two full years, exactly to the day that Pharaoh had a dream and behold, he was standing by the Nile. Interesting. Okay. End of two full years, very prophetic. And you know what happens then. You've got the dream, you've got the seven emaciated cows, you've got the seven fat cows, and the emaciated eat the fat cows, and Joseph becomes the king, okay? And then Genesis 45, six, for the famine had been in the land these two years, and there was still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. Really good verses for why the two full years matter in seven year type prophecies, okay? So let's look at it. Where's Joseph? He's in prison. 
and he remains in prison after interpreting correctly the dreams of the baker and the cupbearer. Okay, so the chief cupbearer, however, did not remember Joseph, for he forgot him. So it's too bad because he interpreted perfectly. The three branches were three years. The, the made grape juice for the pharaoh. In three days, he will be reinstated, and he was. Okay, but he forgot. And the baker, well, he the birds ate the, bre the bread out of the baskets, and in three days he was hung and fed to the birds. So he did everything correctly, and he sat in prison for two more years. That's the prophetic side of this. Now, am I saying that we're going to get a two-year warning? I hope so, but it's conjecture. I understand. I just wanted to cite the verses so you could see it. So remember the cupbearer didn't did remember but two years later okay and joseph called out to him like but remember me when things go well with you and please do me a favor and mention me to pharaoh and you will get me out of this house genesis 40 14. so poor joseph <laughs> horrible but we're stuck in this prison for a few years two at a minimum Okay, it happened at the end of, okay, now this is from Chabad, this is actually from my Milstein edition, my, uh, my Chumash uh, Bible that I love so much. It happened at the end of two years, to the day, as the rabbis would state, Pharaoh was dreaming that behold, Hine, he was standing over the river, standing over the river, interesting, when behold, Hine, out of the river, there emerged seven cows of beautiful appearance and robust flesh, and then following after them were the seven emaciated cows and they ate them up so just keep this in mind it's part of the seven year cycle and there are other weird things going on with the joseph story too in terms of the cup hidden in the uh, the uh, container the the silver chalice that he interprets dreams of uh, very intriguing stuff and that seems to be i liken that to the the silver dome that's sitting there next to the al-aqsa mosque on the temple mount area that there, there's something hidden in Benjamin, and it is <laughs> hidden in the physical part of Benjamin on the Temple Mount, because you think of Judah, but as soon as you get to the Temple Mount area, it becomes Benjamin. So it was, the prophecy worked real well with uh, the, the Joseph story. And with Yeshua too, obviously, you know, the suffering servant from, uh, that would be the Midrashes from, 98a suka 98a is is the reference to the suffering servant and also coming back like david and he will so now a couple more verses on this just so you can see what i'm talking about jeremiah 28 3 within two years i'm going to bring back this place all the vessels of the lord's house which nebuchadnezzar king of babylon took away from this place and carried to babylon so 28 is the intriguing verses where you're going to get the prophet of of um, grace, Hananiah, saying, oh, I'm going to break this wooden yoke. And then God says to Jeremiah, tell him you're going to get an iron yoke. And then Hananiah dies in the last verse of 28. So just keep that in mind. And here's more of 28, 11, Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people saying, thus says the Lord, even so I will break within two full years the yoke of nebuchadnezzar king of babylon from the neck of all the nations then the prophet Jer prophet jeremiah went his way and he comes back later so so keep that in mind it does work prophetically now am i prophesying no i'm just saying that it does work prophetically okay it's conjecture amos 1 1 the words of amos who was among the shepherders, he was not really much of a prophet, he was more of a shepherder from Tekoa, uh, which he envisioned in visions concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Yehuda, in the days of Jeroboam, son of Yoash, Yoash, king of Israel, two years before the earthquake. That sounds like Revelation 6, 14, it does. So I'm not prophesying, I'm just saying that it's very interesting and I think you should watch this fall for a two year sign. Okay, now we're going to handle some apostasy. And uh, yes, the mustache is put there by me. Um, so this is what's going on within Christianity right now. Rather than 
looking at themselves and being introspective and saying, what's wrong with Christianity? They're blaming the Jews. And this is Mondo Gonzalez from Prophecy Watchers. This is one of the worst articles ever. This shows the state of Christianity right now. Now, keep in mind, on the right, lower right-hand side, you'll see I majored in Jewish studies under somebody. Okay, so he majored in Jewish studies, but now he's coming back and he's saying the apostasy of the church that happens at some point in the future, my contention in this article is that the apostasy is not referring to the church, but instead to the leaders of the Jewish nation. So, but it's national Jewish apostasy. That sounds like the mustache guy from the 1940s. Okay, 1930s, 1940s, you know who I'm talking about. And so this is nasty to turn around. And one, there is no monolithic Jewish interpretation of the world. Uh, there are Boo Jews, there are Orthodox Jews, there are Reformed Jews. If you have two Jews, you have 10 opinions, okay? And so there's no monolithic opinion, okay? And, and really, this is so ridiculous to blame them or you know, to blame Israel or a Jewish nation or Jews in general. They aren't reading the New Testament. So if there was any apostasy, they're not going to read Paul and 2 Thessalonians 2.3. So this is ridiculous. This is junk science. This is really bad stuff. And this is what's going to be coming more. As the, um, the people on the pre-trib rapture side get pushed and pushed into a corner, they're going to strike back. And they're being pushed because their own eschatology is failing miserably. So you have to blame somebody. So you always blame the Jews. They're the easiest ones to blame, you know. <laughs> so thank you, Mondo, for being a complete jerk. Okay, now we'll move on to more apostasy, Burning Man. So what's going on? Why does this tie into the two-year warning? Because some of these things are just weird. Okay, so two, a year ago at Burning Man, we had these dust devils pop up, and that's the burning down. The lower left-hand side shows the burning of the effigy. But anyway, this year, the mud apocalypse hits Burning Man, 73,000 trapped in toxic lake bed in Nevada desert, okay? And so <laughs> it rained, it rained horribly. And in Las Vegas too, and Las Vegas is Sin City and Sin City got washed out. They got a baptism, didn't they? So um, 4,000 residents suffering blackouts and, and there's the flooding scenes and more flooding scenes and the casinos, oh, pity me, I can't go to the casino and throw away my life savings. Well, there you go, you, you get a respite, don't you? So flood watches on Saturday have been extended from Nevada into southwestern Utah, northwestern Arizona, and northeastern California. Ugh, <laughs> what a mess. Okay, so now let's deal. There on the right-hand side are these dust devils, okay? And that was during their fire, so they're burning the effigy. <laughs> now, I don't know if this is from, coming from Satan or God, but I like the American thinker on the left-hand side, Burning Man, known for hedonism and neo-paganism, suffers under the wrath of the flood. Is this our two-year warning? I don't know. When the wickedness of man is great on the earth and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, God sent a flood. <laughs> when the waters receded, God made a covenant promise recorded in Genesis 9-11, which reads, and I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off from any more from the waters of the flood, neither shall there be any more flood to destroy the earth, but there are regional floods. And so American thinker, you nail this, you nail this well. So there are floods in this region right now. And so I wanna read the last, uh, second to the last paragraph. Last Sunday, the 2023, 2023 Burning Man Festival kicked off. And this weekend, which marks the end of the festivities where they burn the effigy, more than 70,000 festival goers find themselves stranded thanks to a wrathful deluge of rain. Campers are being told to conserve food and water, overflowing portable toilets can't be cleaned or empties, and at least one person has died, okay? So yeah, they're air conditioned. This is encourages people of all sexual orientations, whether they are polyamorous or monogamous to take part and said feature massage tables, mattresses with clean sheets, lubricants, condoms, and sofas. Ugh, just, Okay, I'm a little bit of a germ phobe, so that is even more disgusting for me. Okay, so um, yeah, you've got, it's just like children. Okay, so now keep in mind the rainbow of Genesis 9 
and how we've got the double rainbow from 2007. So that first picture there is 2007. Then on the lower right-hand side is now this year, another double rainbow. So just note 2007 and 2023, these are warnings of double rainbows. That's like God saying, I'm going to do this to you nicely but they're not repenting, you know that. So they've got the flooding and the mudding and things like that. I want you to see one picture. Yeah, you're looking at the pictures and going, wow, what a mess. But the one picture that's intriguing is in the middle lower, and that is a truck that said, let's get out of this mess. And so they started driving and they basically dug themselves about a three foot hole. And good luck getting that truck out of there, okay? And keep in mind, it's alkaline, so it will rust the, the metals too. I mean, this is an alkaline mess. So it dries the skin out horribly. So, um, so <laughs> let's leave with the lower right hand side. Not a pilot says God one Burning Man zero with the rainbows. God bless him. He's right. Okay. So and I have relatives there. I do. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Stuck in the mud. Pharaoh's Ebola plague. Do yeah. Okay. So what? This is citing is that there's a plague that's killing some people there. Um, they're calling it Ebola. It may not be. The main thing is there's a plague that seems to be rocking this place. So um, is there an Ebola outbreak at Burning Man? They're saying no, but yes, yeah, something's going on there. People are getting sick. So when now keep in mind, so I want you to hear this. This is from the Bible. When these things start to happen, stand up. And, you know, your redemption that draws nigh, hold your heads high because you are about to be liberated. So that's Luke 21, 28. So just keep that in mind. These signs are important. Okay, so where are we? We're in the birth pangs. We are not in the tribulation. We are not in the great tribulation. Are we two years away from it? I don't know. Well, I don't know what the signs will be, but let's just watch things as we go forward this year. You're working on your clean garments. We, we discussed this a few weeks ago that you need to have clean garments. You can't be naked. You can't have dirty garments. You have to get into the wedding people. And whether it's Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur or Sukkot of whatever year it happens to be, you need to get into the wedding. So work on that. That's, that's faith and repentance and doing something good. And in Revelation, the word erga or ergo, like work, is there everywhere. So do something good for somebody. So that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Be blessed and we'll see you.